Hello everyone and welcome to the week 15 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Bourne. We start in Chicago where the fire appealed for two penalty kicks. First, in the 32nd minute, does this Mike McGee shot strike the arm of Michael Harrington? It looks more like it hits his face to me. Then, in the second half, there was a hint of a handball by Jack Jewsbury in the box. But to me, that goes off his chest, not his hand. Good no call on both plays by referee Jorge Gonzalez. But while the Timbers get off scot-free on the penalty kick claim, I think there were potentially three red cards that could have been shown to Portland players. First, Ben Zemanski is beaten by Patrick Nyarko on the dribble in the 40th minute. And it seems to me like this is an intentional elbow. He seeks to make the contact. Look how high up that thing is. Next, in first half stoppage time, Timbers defender Pa Moduka takes out Chris Rolfe with a studs up tackle. But Gonzalez calls the offside on McGee instead. Ka apparently loves to leave his feet on tackles because he did it again in the 74th minute, and that should have at least been a yellow to me. The third potential red card for the Timbers came two minutes later. Diego Chara, who's already on a yellow card, pulls down Alex, who's heading toward goal. In my opinion, that was enough for a second yellow. This is exactly the type of tactical foul that the laws of the game calls unsporting behavior. Moving to Gillette Stadium, where I thought there should have been a red card in that game to the Revolution's Lee Wynn. It's the 78th minute and the ball is long gone, but Wynn makes sure to go in studs up on ex-Rev St. Inayasi and clearly makes contact. It looked like an innocent enough clip in real time, but the replay shows it endangers the safety of his opponent. This was the debut match for referee Ted Uncle, and I thought he had a fairly clean game, although I do think this call for a push by Juan Agudelo on DC's Ethan White was perhaps a little harsh. Sire Sen rifles the ball into the back of the net well after the whistle. Off to Rio Tinto Stadium, where there's one play to look at. It's the 49th minute, and it looks like A.J. De La Garza commits a handball on this shot by Joao Plata. We don't have better angles, but based on what we have here, I can't see the ball making contact with anything else but his arms. Now, a referee is not in the business of inferring what happens, but referee Drew Fisher is in great position. And lastly, we finish up in Seattle, where the Sounders rightly wanted a penalty kick in the 54th minute. Vancouver's June Marcus Davidson clearly clips over Femi Martins in the box. Now, I don't think we can put this on the assistant referee because he has players further upfield he's focused on, but referee Hilario Grajeda seems to have an unobstructed view of the play. In the 69th minute, the Sounders did get their PK when Greg Clausura just chops down Seattle's Lamar Nagel in the box. That was the equalizer for the Sounders. But should the Whitecaps have had a penalty kick in the 29th minute when they were already up 2-1? to one? Sure, Sounders defender Zach Scott gets some of the ball, but he also takes out both of Camilo's legs in the process and also puts his studs right into Camilo's left knee. To me, that should have been a PK. Now, many have taken exception to Camilo appealing for a foul and then collapsing and supposedly feigning injury. To be honest, it doesn't matter. Again, studs into the left knee.